Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. I hope you had a wonderful week and some fun building Dash apps. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you an introduction to Dash AG Grid. Some people prefer Dash AG Grid over the Dash uh, data table. And so I'm going to give you uh, a nice overview of what you can do with Dash AG Grid and show you how to get started. So to do that, I have two Dash apps. In this Dash app, we have a histogram connected to Dash AG uh, Grid that's up right here. And every time we filter something, let's filter this one from just mail, it will update the histogram and the carpet plot, plot above, right? Also, we're going to create this uh, Dash app that has Dash AG Grid connected to the scatter plot, but not through the filter, rather through the rows. So every time you click on a different uh, row, you'll see the uh, respective um, marker of that row highlighted in yellow and a bigger size. So we're going to use these two Dash apps to give you an introduction to Dash AG Grid. Uh, I highly recommend you follow along uh, by going into my GitHub. You can find the link under the video. Go into Dash AG Grid and Introduction and Inside Introduction. Download these two files or just go into like this. Go raw, select everything, copy, and then put it inside your Python IDE. All right, you can find the link uh, under the video and all, uh, don't forget, you can always fork this uh, GitHub or star it to show some appreciation and love. All right, so let's go to our uh, Python IDE. I'm using PyCharm. We will start with uh, AG grade intro, not intro two, but the initial intro.py. So here we import all our files. Um, if you don't have these installed, just do pip install dash like this. Go there, pause it, uh, sorry, open the terminal, and you can do just pip install dash, and then pip install dash ag grid, and pandas, and you should be ready to go. All right, now we're going to use the build, the Plotly Express built-in uh, tips uh, data, and we're going to turn it into, it's actually a pandas data frame, so it doesn't matter, you can use other um, data sets, you can use Excel sheets, CSV sheet, JSON files, as long as you convert it to a pandas data frame, it will be easier for you to follow along. So here we have our dash um, AG grid uh, table, right? So we're calling uh, uh, DAG, which we referred to as dash AG grid, dot AG grid, and then we have all these properties. But don't worry about it because these are just uh, these are just um, uh, extras. You can actually take this out, uh, and you can you can even take the ID out. You don't necessarily need them. The, all you need to start with dash age you get is these two properties: row data and column definitions. The row data is uh, you have to convert a pandas data frame to a, a list of dictionaries, and this is always how you do it. So you can just copy paste this line of code assuming your data is DF right a list of dictionaries and this defines the data inside each row right here define the data inside each row then you have columns you have one two three four five six seven different columns so you have to define the columns and you define the columns with column definitions and again this is a list a list of dictionaries I put here and you need this you need this and this list of dictionaries, every dictionary represents a column. A column. In this case, we're only giving it the the, the header, uh, the column name, and so we we loop over the DF columns. The first one is total bill, then tip, then sex, and so on and so on. And for every header, we give it a dictionary: field uh, uh, and total bill, field, tip, field, sex. So we have seven different dictionaries, and that is it. That's all you need to get started. Now, you will typically see these uh, properties as well. These are some default column definitions. So if, for example, I want all my columns to have filters, right? So now I can go in here and I'll see that these columns have uh, filters. Contains, equal, not equal. I want them to have a minimum width of 115 pixel. Each column has a minimum width. You can make it bigger or smaller. Um, with resizable true, right? 
Column size, uh, column size is uh, assigned size to fit. So you see how it fits the whole page instead of just one half of the page or one third of the page. One one fifteen times seven columns. It does the whole page. Dash grid options. Here we're going to put pagination true and pagination size ten. And what this does, let's make this smaller. It gives you this. Um, pages 1 to 25, 10 pages per 10 rows per page, uh, 244 pages, uh, uh, data points, 25 pages. You can go all the way to the end or all the way to the beginning. We have 10 data points, 10 rows per page. And then we have our uh, themes. You can uh, choose, I think, six or seven, seven different themes. Just go here and you will see um, all the different themes that are uh, provided. All right. Now this is a big part of um, that I want you to have. This is something written by uh, Anne Marie, uh, soon also to be written by by Plotly, um, and this is this is the docs for Dash AG Grid. Very very useful tool. Definitely um, uh, make sure you read it over because it has uh, a lot of information that you can benefit from. This will be under the video as well. All right. So we have our table. It's our Dash AG Grid. We're going to create a simple graph with an empty figure so it's not going to be anything inside of it just an empty dictionary we'll start dash and then we'll put the graph and uh, the first part of the layout and underneath it we'll put the table so this is a result graph empty dictionary and then the dash ag grid right now we're going to use the callback to create the graph. Here's where we're going to create the PX Plotly Express histogram. Now this looks kind of big and scary, but it really isn't. Trust me. It's a lot simpler than it looks. What we're doing here is we're saying in the callback uh, decorator, take the virtual row data property, right, of my table. My table is, this is the ID, is a dash AG grid. So dash AG grid has row data property, column definition property. It also has a virtual row data property. And you can copy this, go to the documentation, go to getting started, references right here, control F. And you'll see under here, all the end of the page virtual data is the row data in the grid after inline filters are applied. So after we apply filters, this is this is the the virtual row data, right? So how are we connecting it? We put male or we put um, female. Whoops, dmail doesn't mean anything. Female, and it updates the graph. How do we do that? But we'll take the virtual data inside our callback function, vData, we'll call it vData, you can call it anything you want. And then we're gonna say if vData, if we have virtual data, do something. If not, if nothing is clicked on it, we'll just refresh, then just build a Plotly Express histogram, x-axis, y-axis, color, with the data frame being DF, the original DF with all the data right all the data 244 points of data this is if 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 there is no if there's no virtual data present but if there is virtual data present let's do smoker yes limit it to only smoker if there is virtual data present then put tr make this virtual data convert it into a pandas data frame call it dff and then build the same histogram with this new data frame called DFF. And that should obviously limit the data frame because it's filtered to fewer data points. So here we have only 93 data points. Let's cancel this. All right, let's put day, let's make day, we'll make it only Saturday. And now we'll see only 87 data points. Let's cancel Saturday no virtual data and if there's no virtual data else the full histogram all right so this is how you build dash ag grid and this is how you connect its virtual data to um a graph right or anything else you can once you have the data you can do whatever you want with it all right let me show you another example the second example is going to 
connect not the virtual data, it will connect the row, right? So if I choose a different row, it will highlight a different marker belonging to this row. You see, this is total bill, uh, 25.29, and this is 25.29. All right, so how do we do that? For this, we use the cell clicked parameter. But before we go over that, I'm going to uh, dash ag grid intro 2. This is the file we're looking at. And uh, we're doing the same thing, importing uh, libraries, same data set. Here, instead of passing um, column definition, instead of passing just the same field, just a field parameter, we're also going to pass um, filter ag number column filter. So what I'm doing here, I'm creating a new list called column defs, right? And we're going to iterate over the column names. And if the column name is tip, total bill, or size, in addition to this, we will also have a filter ag number column filter. And why do we want this? Because we want those columns to have a number filter. Look at this. This is a text filter, not equal, start with, end with, blank. And this is a column column. Uh, <laughs> data filter, a number filter, greater than, great, uh, less than, not equal. So these, tip, total bill, and size. Total bill, tip, and size will all have a number filter. So this is how we did it, right here. And then we assign the column defs into the column definitions. All the rest is exactly the same as the first intro file. Now the only difference here is that we are not taking the virtual row data here we are taking the cell click data now if we you can i printed it out and i'm saying if there is c data which is referred to the cell click data if there is uh, c data present just print it out let's see what it prints out so let's see here let's move this to the left all right let's print out this one 2101 see right here 2101 and I'm taking the row ID this is what I care about I'm going to take the row ID which is the second because this is 0 1 2 row ID second or 2 but it's a string of 2 so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the C data row ID take number 2 wrap it and convert it into an integer so now this will be equal to 2 right if I take 3 then you see row ID 3 this will be equal to three now remember this cell row now i want to update the data the scatter marker uh to have it to make it yellow and a bigger size so i'm going to do it with these two lists the new color and the new size now all of this all all this is this new color list is just a list of 244 um data points we're, we're looping over for x in range 0 to 245 or 244, we're looping over each one of them. And if x, right, the first time x equals 0, so it's going to be blue. Let's say I click on this. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. So x will be 0, so it's not equal to, to 3, then blue. Uh, 1, not equal to 3, then blue. When x equals 3, because it goes into the third uh, loop or fourth loop, then it will equal yellow. So we'll have blue, 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 yellow, and then blue, blue, blue for the rest of the 239 times. Same thing here, new size. We're going to loop over the 244 uh, points, and if the x equals whatever row we clicked on, let's say 5, then uh, this row will have size 30 or just an integer, integer 30, and the rest will be 10, 10, 10, 10, 30, 10, 10, 10 for the rest of the 244 data points. You can even print it out. It might be easier for you to see. Print a new size and just see what comes out. All right? Take a look at it. All right. And now we are building our scatter plot, just a normal DF that we have in the global data. So all the data points are here. And once we build the scatter plot, here, this is how we can update the color of the marker and the size of the marker. We'll add, we'll create, um, we'll add this new list of colors and new list of size. And that is how we are returning the fig 
to the figure property of my graph right here. So this is the new fig right here. And that is how whenever I click on a different row, that respective marker is yellow and in a bigger size, 30. Right? If if there is no C data, when we refresh it, nothing is clicked on yet, then we just return a scatter plot. Same thing here, but with with nothing, no updated color or updated size. So that is it. I would highly recommend you go into this documentation. Uh, you can see all the different uh, references, but even more than that, look over the different examples. There are great, great examples here of how to use different um, uh, properties of AG Grid, how to uh, um, manage the rows, uh, the layout, the styling, the filtering. This is, uh, this is pretty powerful stuff. I mean, you can do a lot with Dash AG Grid. As always, uh, I hope you really enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, make sure to um, uh, sign up to my YouTube channel, uh, click on the notification, uh, support me on Patreon if you want to support uh, this education that I provide. I will be um, highly uh, uh, appreciative of your efforts. And um, that's really it. If you have any questions in the comment section under the video, um, always remember we are uh, better together, so help each other out. Have a good day.